Hey everybody, JB back with you once again, and welcome to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Um, for some reason the music hasn't kicked in yet, so I'm gonna just proceed along here until it does. Hey Nick! What is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy! Oh, so check out the mask to mask glossy I bought. You bought this... where? Alright, so uh, I'll have the Mask to Mask theme song play here while we recap. So last time we met the man who apparently is Mask to Mask, a very timid person named Ron Delight, and uh, he has a wife named Desiree who's convinced that Ron is delusional and thinks that he is Mask to Mask. Um, but we are suspecting that somebody is trying to frame him, maybe Desiree, maybe somebody else, for being a masked mask, mask and uh, stealing all these treasures. So right now Ron is on trial and he is our client and we're trying to get him off the hook uh, because we believe that it is somebody else and that we're trying to prove that here. From the little tents in front of the courthouse, they have all sorts of things for sale. Oh yeah, and the other thing that's going on too is uh, we know a couple things that are going to happen in today's trial. One of them is that Luke Atney is going to be taking the stand as a witness. And also, there's going to be a new prosecutor named Godot, who we have never heard about before last time. You know, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Mask to mask publicity photos stuck into the court record. A shot of Mask Damask striking a pose. Come on, I'm guilty! Throw the book at me! Who's screaming like that? I have a pretty good idea. Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did. But it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Yeah, you're wearing the Mask Damask costume to court. How is that a good idea? Because I did it! I'm the criminal! Me, me, me! Oh, he's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lord Lee Taylor. I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true. But that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally, when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic. But you... Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict. Please? Why are you so eager for a guilty verdict? Are you being blackmailed or something? Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, Desi, honey. Bonjour. Well, actually... Wait a minute. Was somebody blackmailing him? I, I remember we had a letter here. Um... If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 o'clock a.m. on October 12th and bring $50,000. If you don't, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Okay. So that is a blackmail letter for Ron. I, I didn't remember if it was him or Desi who had it. I don't know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, well, uh, you see, Ashley the Thief is, er, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. Uh, shouldn't you be here supporting Ron? To be honest, I don't really know whether Ron is mask to mask or not. But I, there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. Yeah, that's all we have to go off of right now. Alright, it's 10 o'clock and that means court time. Well, Godot looks like an interesting fellow. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh, 
What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to? What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine, let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? What? N no, I am not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I am Godot. Legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. I am loving his theme music. Ah, he's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha. Huh. None. What did you say? I thought Atme said that you were like a legend prosecutor. I've never prosecuted a case before. Never? But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of Redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask and a court of law? Well, I don't see why not. We're, we are um, going after mask to mask after all, right? Huh, don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy's the real deal, all right, Nick. Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. Um, Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? That's what I'm wondering. I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Um, I don't think I know you. Well then, uh, Professor Gobo... It's not Gobo, it's Godot, Your Honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statements? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder, how much can you can withstand before you and your case break in two? Hmm, well then, let's hear from the first witness. So what kind of reputation did this guy have before this case? Um, uh, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Er. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking. We're listening. Yes, sir. All right, witness. First, let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes, sir. All right, Mask Damasks Crimes. Mask Damask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was mask to mask, sir. Fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm, so then the actual identity of this mask to mask is... Mr. Godot, where are you? Wow, that coffee just slid right in there. We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot! Blacker than a moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well. It's only coffee, after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that it wasn't Mask Damask who stole the urn. Hmm, I wonder how we're going to do that. Um, what do we have in the court record? Uh, 
Let's see here. This doesn't really say much. Although it has Maya's picture on it. Um, let's move to the Night of the Crime. Oh! It has no monetary value. Maybe that's... Is that what we're supposed to present here? Yeah! There we go. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. What, what do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I mean it from a financial point of view. Whoops. I am so sorry about that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but my window disappeared. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mask to Mask would normally go after. Er... Hmm, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred art was not the work of Mask to Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mask to Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? This coffee here... It's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Mask to Mask that stole the urn, then it must be someone imitating Mask to Mask's methods. A fake. A fake to mask? Fake to mask? That sounds so ridiculous. But I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm, if I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. It looks like I'm going to have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lordly Tayworth that night was in fact fake Damask. Okay, so we actually have to do this. Um, I'm going to check this real quick. Um... I don't think I actually read that before. I'm trying to see what all all we got here. So we can see him holding a box here. Oh, you know what it is? Hang on a sec. This shot of Mass Damask has this little smiley emblem here, but this one, I don't see that. So I think we're supposed to present this. That seems pretty, yeah, the proof is right here. They're showing the icon for the thing, so that's usually a good sign. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show us just what about this picture is so peculiar. Okay, I hope I'm pointing in the right direction. It's right here, of course. You mean Masked Damask? I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on Damask's chest. A breach? 
Here? Bailiff, get my steed! We need to retreat at once! Uh, a brooch, Your Honor. It's a sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. Well, the master mask and the security folk will wear... Ah, he has no brooch! That brooch is the same as the emblem on Damask's calling card and serves as a symbol. But the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this masked Damask is a fake! I've been fooled again! Order is true! Undeniably true! Detective Gumshoe, how? How could you have overlooked us? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... Uh-oh. Hey, now. If you're gonna have a pity party, invite me, too. Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame in this, too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh. The brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Ah. That's Mass Damask's brooch. Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? You must mean the Amy Faye statue. Well, why don't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Grr, this guy's one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. Hickeys! Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch? Uh-oh, that's not good. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch! I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. Damask's brooch added to the court record. Found in the shadow of Amy Faye's statue. Looks like it was torn off of some clothing. Huh. You mess with Godot? And you get burned. Grr, he's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. It never does. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally, time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? It's Luke at me. One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh! Silence! He 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 he! Now I see! It's all becoming clear! What's clear? Zavari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. Ha, huh, not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Look At Me, Ace Detective and Rising Star Illuminating the Heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe was worth anything, that is... Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Well then, tell us what this special monocle of yours witnessed. Alright, what I witnessed. 
It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. Uh, wouldn't that have happened at 12 o'clock? That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask de Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Dancingly descended? Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. Okay, I don't see anything particularly uh, contradictory in there. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. Well, except mask to mask about to strike you. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. Oh, I'm making excuses now, aren't we? But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, that's pretty normal for him. Well, sir old-timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but of the King of Thieves, the great Mask de Mask, my arch enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. All right. Uh, well, let's just press everything for now. So that would be 1 o'clock on the morning of the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, sir lawyer. You were on security duty that night. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question. I was in the basement warehouse near the computer. Near the computer, huh? So then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it? Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said that they've never spied the thief at the crime scenes before. Precisely. That is precisely why I chose not to hide last night. I knew that by not concealing myself, I would be putting pressure on the thief. Looks like the thief was the one applying pressure on your pigeony head, that is. In any case... Dancing we descended? From where, exactly? That's what I was wondering. Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? Well, then he wouldn't have descended. So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Thanks, Phoenix. I'm glad you and I are on the same page here. Um, so how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. It can only be due to his subtly camouflaged cape and soft-soled shoes. I hereby W. Ace Dunce. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened? Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask. That's all I can recall. Hmm, that's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However, fortunately I had my third monocle, the security camera, at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm, well, as long as his photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Nope. Good, then let's continue with the testimony. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing? That's certainly some very impressive detective work. Hmm, well, Sir Lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Well, actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. Yeah, that happened at the beginning of the last game. And what happened? I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too! You see, you have no right to look down on me then, do you? I suppose not. The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. Hmm. He may have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to have been severed. In any case, that is how I was knocked senseless. And then... 
Okay, this is the last thing we can talk about. About this 30 minutes. My silver cord was loosened and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. As usual, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. So, what happened during these 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of time has truly vanished into the ether. Just what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective Abney. How could he not have noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? The real question is, why would he tell such an obvious lie? Okay, so apparently there is evidence. Um, oh yeah, wasn't there something that suggested there was a struggle? I thought there was something that was like... Oh, where is this? Didn't we, like, notice something that suggested that there was a struggle, or am I misremembering? Okay, so the warehouse camera definitely went off at 1 a.m., we know that. That's not disputed here. Um... That's nothing particularly, um... useful here. This, yeah, that doesn't contradict anything he's saying. I don't really know what to do here. I'm, I'm gonna have to look this one up. Let's find out what we need. I feel like there's something that we're supposed to infer from one of these things, unless it's a profile. So Luke at me is a little older than I am. Okay. Uh, let's go look here. Oh. Um, I'm supposed to present the brooch? Oh, because it was ripped off. Right. Okay. That makes sense. There we go. Mr. At me. Could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha! This belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Mask Damask! It is, in point of fact, Mask Damask's brooch! It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. Ah, elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Uh uh. Not quite. They clearly show signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! Uh -huh. We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position of a struggle with a thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Atme. Er. Detective Atme, you must have fought with a thief that night. So why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Was it embarrassing? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. And yet, I've never seen anyone punished for the, that in these games. Er, I don't know. Wait just a moment, Sir Oldtimer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. He 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 he. I just remembered, Your Honor. Uh -oh. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. Hmm. The true measure of a man is in the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time. Isn't that right? You talk too much. Witness! So are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Excuse me? Yeah, what's going on here? 
Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, look at me, agree completely. Alright, fight with the thief. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, Luke Atme cannot be so easily discombobulated. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights with only his fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. But that doesn't, doesn't that still contradict his testimony? If his first blow struck true and you were out and... You, so in the end, did you catch Mask the Mask? Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm, well that's certainly understandable. So it sounds like he's trying to say that he caught a glimpse of Mask to Mask, but I don't think that that was what was in question. I thought what was in question was him striking a blow to Mask to Mask and fighting with him. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. That can't be good. Indeed. Okay, um, I guess we'll just press everything here. Ooh, we have the fast music. So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I had prepared a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer. Elegantly, of course. Of course. So you were momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer? What should I do? Should I ask some more questions? Yes. Let's talk about this sensor. What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. A cat door? I hooked up heat detecting, infrared, and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. That's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? Wardley Taylor Department Store was kind enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Naturally, the security camera that took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, he couldn't have rigged the equipment, huh? Hee 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 hee. Has that cleared up any doubts you had about me, sir lawyer? Not really. I'm gonna ask about the computer. Okay, here we go. So that computer belonged to Lordly Taylor as well? Correct! Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specially designed by me! Look at me! In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. Hee 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 hee! What's wrong, sir lawyer? However, Lu oh. Um, we'll press that. Um, what does that mean? Discombobulated. Hmm, young people these days, they really irritate me. They allow perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? Now I've forgotten. What was I saying? Jeez, it's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Well, it looks we've cleared, like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, that thief had no idea that I, look at me, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword? You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Shishishido. So the thief armed himself with a sword. And what about yourself, witness? You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities. But of course, in college I was the second in charge of the boxing club. I'm sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. Yeah, um, I feel like boxing and sword fighting are kind of different. 
However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Mask Damask. This guy's a real piece of work. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powericious. That sounds like something I would say. Powericious? I assumed the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? Um, yeah, I want to know about this blinded part. So what was this flash of light that blinded you? I was bathed in a golden light that seemed to come from the statue of the woman. The statue of Amy Fay, I'm guessing. Well, that wasn't very much help at all. What do you think, Nick? Well, there's one thing that I'm absolutely sure of now. Yeah? What is it? It's Luke at me guy. He's definitely hiding something. But, but why? I'm starting to... I think I'm starting to figure out what really happened that night. And about the true nature of this detective. Okay. Um, I'm going to press again. Just ask about the at me fighting style. Or stance. What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but uh, that's a trade secret. I really can't say any more. But, I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one could get behind you. Um, so in that case, it, how could the thief had snuck up on you? That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? Um, I would say that's very important because if the, your back is against the wall, how could anyone sneak up on you? Of course it's important. We've learned a detective's secret technique, after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone late at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness, we'll go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. I put my back to the wall to fight, but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Um... Is there something that mentions him? Yeah, this. Back to the, of the head. How can the back of your head get knocked if you were against the wall? Attention. Detective at me. Your, crest, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, sir lawyer. It is truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have warped his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testify that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Urk, it seems I've made another mistake. For sure. Detective at me. That's not the only strange part of your testimony. Well, what do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Yeah, that is a little weird. Urk. Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. Whoa! That voice. To err is human. To forgive, divine. Humans aren't machines. They have souls. Feelings. They live. They die. They love. They hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on. It's not as pretty as that. Whoa! Whoa! Really? What is it like, then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. 
Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that. I think we have to go all in on this. This is... This is the only logical explanation. The answer is simple. It's all queer to me now. Yeah, it's been elegantly revealed to me, you could say. Detective Luke Atme's true identity is actually Mask to Mask. Yarg! Ooh, it's corner time. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Atme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. So that's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please, the explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Atme. The truth is that you are, in fact, Mask to Mask. But by Mr. Wright, this photo, it clearly shows Mask to Mask. Yeah, exactly. The security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. But he said he had a program. He didn't need to manipulate it. Yeah, and also, he's just wearing the costume, right? He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? Aha. <laughs> the mask's MO is pure genius. And so am I, look at me, ace detective. You are very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I am impressed, Sir Lawyer. What? Witness, you... you're admitting it? Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Abney, when you assume the thief's identity... Ouch. Godot blend number 102. My personal favorite. How many blends do you have? Mr. Godot! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But by Mr. Godot! Mr. Wright has made some very strong points and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of whole cloth. But it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see this decisive proof you have. Quickly! Huh? Oh, yes, of course. What's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? Abby looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can, but can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is, in fact, mask to mask. Oh, I don't like this. Can we save? Alright. I'm gonna say it's yet to be found. Let's see what happens. Proof? Of course I, I, I've got nothing. Ha, just what I thought. A man has to hold his head up high no matter how bad things get after all. Ugh. I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this, this guy is a thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But, are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So, you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I, um... Oh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. It seems a cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. 
Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... What? Who? Desiree. Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Well, it kind of does. Miss Delight, what are you doing here? Nicky boy! The thing you've been looking for... I think I found it! You mean that bag? Oh yeah, we found that bag yesterday and it had something smooth and hard inside it. No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Oh hey, it's spelled correctly. Well? The that's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! Order, order, order! You, madame! That urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective. Look at me! Oh, Desi, you're the best! Sacred urn updated in the court record. Found in the office of Look at Me. Has pink splotches all over it. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. At Me? I don't know if he can. Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Ha. Pathetic. Mr. Godot, you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved? Before casting aspersions at Detective Atme, Consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight. Isn't that correct? Yes! What about it? Ha! Huh, how charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could you only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong. I would never... I would never do such a thing. Miss Delight. Please, Nicky boy, you've got to help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Urn was actually in the detective agency. The Atme detective agency. Um, can we show fingerprints on the Urn? I can prove where the urn was by the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Now you're really making me laugh, Sir Lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. May I go on? Good. Now it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I'm always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. Well, that's convenient. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? This witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. Nick, what are you going to do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Abby must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. Hmm. Is it Pearl because she was there? But like, wouldn't she have... Wait. No, we put our fingerprints on the inside, right? Let me try it, I'm gonna see. Didn't we try going in the bag and then we got stopped? So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? 
Hey, Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy, this is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Yep. Well, hello there! It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at that time, but I did touch what was inside. What? You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, er, uh, that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atme's office. Let me guess. Well, you... you we're just going to take you on your word and... Oh. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Oh yeah, I guess that's true. Of course it does. What did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. I polished it until it was just about glowing. Oh yeah. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. That's right, I forgot about that. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday at the Atme Detective Agency. Ha, this blend, Godot blend number 107. I've decided it's a little too bitter after all. Order, order, order. I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait, wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. No need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. What are you saying? Yes, I've finally broken him down. Hee 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 ha 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 hee hee. Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. What? Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I'm the one and only mask to mask. Wait, we're, we're just doing this now? Haha, -ha, I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. Hee 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 ha 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 Well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Atme's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. Uh-oh. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Er, um, I mean... Not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. This can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me. I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty. Please. Um... Uh. I don't know what kind of a kangaroo court you all think this is, but... Objection. The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass judge... What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Godot, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Ha. Hey there, Mr. Thief. 
Yes. Yes, sir. If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are masked to mask, then prove it. That's what it means. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in life to become a man. I know that. I won't fail. I swear. Okay, then. Talk. We're all listening. Oh, well. Let's all have a listen to this confession. Oh, we're going to have a witness testimony here. The truth is, I've been masked to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm actu not actually masked to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo. That's me. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off, that's all. Hmm, I don't like the direction this trial has taken. But this is how every trial goes, at least with me anyway. Ha, huh, you're doing great. Hee hee hee. Stop it, Mr. Godot. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true mask to mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Godot. I... I'll do my best. Alright, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. I think I know what the contradiction here is, by the way. Because he... We have his wallet. There we go. Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, yes, it does. I had lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you found, find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Ah, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? Well, let's see, I think it was on the night of the crime. But I know that I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 o'clock a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was, in fact, at KB Security that night. No! So if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then this, that proves that he has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry, anyway. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee! Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me Thief, Mr. Godot. Alright, I'll try. I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there and not at the heist. Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? The keycard to KB Security's CEO's office. No! Ha, that was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. What? Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to KB Security in the middle of the night anyway? Well, we're not saying that he did. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, it looks like you need some more evidence after all. 
Grr, stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to Kiwi Security at 1 a.m. that night. Oh, you mean... Yeah. I, I'm forgetting that uh, Godot is just calling him Thief. You know, instead of his name. Um... This one. It's gotta be this. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Ah, that that's... What is it? What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. Blackmail? Yes, basically it says, bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, right? At the time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with the blackmailer himself. In KB Security's CEO office, a full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Ugh. Ugh. No, 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 no! Order! 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 So when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB Security. It looks like a perfect case for the defense. You may see it as a perfect case, Judge, but to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot Blend 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? You say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company. Well, I didn't say that the blackmailer was the CEO just to go there. But, did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. Not sure what I think of that, at least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim that the defendant entered the CEO's office? But you will need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There is someone else who can testify. This is the person who can testify that the keycard was used at 1 a.m. that night. Is it Larry? Who is this useless-looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm, not exactly. But just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my head. It looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is this key card. Yep, that's a key card they use in the building I work. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analyzing this keycard's data. Blah. That's all you have to say? Hmm. I'd say that looks pretty good for us. Well, Mr. Godot? The name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but I got the keycard data. Here. So what does it show? Each keycard has its own serial number, and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1 a.m. on the morning of the crime. Keycard updated in the court record, found in Ron's wallets, used at October 12th, the night of the crime, at 1 a.m. But that means it can't be Mr. Delight dressed as mask to mask in this photo. Huh, it looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a good a cup of joe. 
So, so then. Rhonda Light was clearly in the office of KB's security CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be masked to mask. Good job! You did it, Nick! That's enough! I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man! Again. Besmirching him with the title of thief! Again. What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgment, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. Hmm. Um. Very well. So is this it? The court finds the defendant, Ron, Mr. Ron Delight. Not guilty. Yay! So that's all? Court is now adjourned. Usually these things take two days. October 13th, 224 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Nick, you did it! You were right after all! Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy! Oh, Miss Delight! I know you could do it! I believed in you all along, Nicky boy! I don't know how I can ever repay you! Aw, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick! Oh, pearls! I've got a bad feeling about this. Gasp! Who is this woman? Oh, she's... she's nobody. She's just, uh... You're blushing! How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya! You should be ashamed of yourself! Youch! She slapped me! Um, Pearly... This woman is Mr. Miss Desiree Delight. She's her client's wife. <gasps> Mr. Nick! Yes? You're even worse than I thought! Going behind the back of your own client! No, no, no! You've got it all wrong! I'll never forgive you! Ow! A double slap! Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? We got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught! You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. But actually, it was you, Miss Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. If we won the case... Then why does this guy still look so glum? Ugh, but I am the thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I know that, and I appreciate it, does he? But the thing is... Come on, give the kid some time. Hey, he's just got a little touch of the blues. You know about feeling blue, right, amigo? Mr. Godot, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Maybe you should learn my name before you call me Buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. What? Kane Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? Isn't that the name of the CEO of KB Security? Wait, the body? The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. Uh-oh. 1 a.m. on October 12th? You don't mean... That's right, amigo. At the same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Haven't you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Helped me out? What? On October 12th at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office, the scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbrued with utter rage. What are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security? It looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an, an anti-alibi. 
No way! He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. No! That's a lie! It can't be true! Oh, oh, but, but, but I, I am a thief, I tell you. Ron Delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't, this is impossible. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal between you two? Apparently so, and I'm not sure what it is. I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. This guy, who the heck is he? He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, Time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. Ah, <sighs> we were so close to finishing this. Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the one who established his presence at the scene was me. Yeah, Ronnie! Aww. Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck's going to happen next? Indeed. Well, we'll have to find out in the next video. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. So take care, and I will see you.